Is the Xbox Series S enough for the hardcore gamer? That is a question I get asked on the regular, so I'm going to make this the absolute best video to answer that question, even though it's not an easy one to answer. Because in order to answer that question, I have to define what a hardcore gamer is, and every gamer may give you a different answer. But I've narrowed it down in the two columns. So here we go. Hardcore gamer definition number one. Those that call themselves hardcore gamers because they game and it's their primary hobby. They game all week long, either playing new games all the time, or they are addicted to one game in particular like me with Apex Legends. On the flip side of the coin, we have hardcore gamer definition number two. These are people who consider themselves to be a hardcore gamer because they desire the highest resolution and frame rates possible for every game they play. These people are not satisfied with subpar, even if they aren't PC Master Race gamers. So with those two definitions in mind, let's do this. The Series S is an amazing little console, $299 for a console that plays all the next gen games, or current gen games, just with some compromises. Yes, I said compromises, and with that word being said, I would imagine the crowd belonging to my second definition of hardcore gamer to have checked out already. But just give me a second. For those of you that want all the resolution and frames possible, yes, the Series S is not for you. At least, not for your primary console. What's nice though is that the Series S may serve you well as a secondary console or travel companion. Because of its tiny size and the really cool X screen attachment that is now available, it's basically a cheap gaming laptop that can be put into any backpack without issue, making for a great console to take with you on vacations or when traveling for work, truck drivers especially. So if that gave you the answer you wanted, please leave me a like and comment down below before you go. Now, for those of you that belong to my first definition of hardcore gamer, meaning you're more lenient with resolution and frame rates, stick around, I've got some info to help you in your decision as well. The Series S may be the perfect console for you. Every next gen game that is on the Series X will be on the Series S as well, meaning you won't miss out on any games this generation. But it does get a little weird sometimes. Not every dev will optimize in the same way for the Series S. While some games may give you an option for a 60 frames per second and lower resolution mode, or a higher resolution with 30 frames per second, others may not. For example, Assassin's Creed Valhalla gives you a choice between the two, while other games only run at 60 frames a second and at a lower resolution and draw distance. Some games choose the flip side of things and may lock in the resolution at 1440p, but forcing you to play at 30 frames per second. And this is why I couldn't keep the Series S as my primary console anymore. For me, frame rate is king. It's something we haven't had in past generations of consoles. The smoothness of 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second is not something I want to ever have to deal with out again. But if that doesn't bother you, then maybe the Series S is all you need. Not every game has visible compromises though. Some games are so close to the Series X version it can be hard to spot the difference for some people. Fortnite and Apex Legends both run and look incredible on the Series S. Yes, the Xbox Series X and PS5 look better, but for it to be so close at such a cheaper price, that's impressive. Xbox's first party games are among these games as well. While there is a noticeable downgrade in resolution on Halo Infinite, other games like Gears 5 and Psychonauts 2 look almost identical to the Series X versions with frame rate and all. I would imagine as the years go by, devs will get better and better at optimizing their games for the Series S, so the downgrades will diminish year after year. Now, if you are okay with what I've just told you, then there are two more things you need to know and be okay with. For one, the Series S is a digital-only console, so no discs. Only digital media. Second, the storage space is rather small for someone who has a large library. The 512GB SSD in the Series S only has around 360GB available for games. The other is reserved for the console software and such. This is easily remedied with an expansion SSD from Seagate or an external hard drive for your Xbox One game. Just remember most, meaning almost all, current gen games will need to be installed on the SSD while last gen games can be installed on an external hard drive. You can store your current gen games on the hard drive but won't be able to play them from it. So to summarize, the questions you have to ask yourself before buying a Series S is this. Can I deal with a smaller storage space? Am I okay with not being able to buy physical games? And am I flexible with my expectations of what each dev may give me in their game? referring to performance and resolution, of course. While Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 may run at 1080p, 60 frames per second, Gotham Knights may run at 1440p, 30 frames a second. 
If you are okay with that, then go for it. Get yourself an Xbox Series S and dive headfirst into Game Pass, devouring each and every game they give you. Well, I know this one was short, my friends, but I just wanted to answer this question once and for all. I love you, I appreciate you, and I hope you have a great week. Please don't forget to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and check back for some of my live streams sometime, every Wednesday and Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on my YouTube channel. Also, giveaways are back. Yes, I know, it's been a while, but the giveaways are back. All you gotta do is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below each video throughout the month or live stream, doesn't matter. Uh, I basically will be doing two live streams a week and one video a week. That's a chance for three entries uh, a week. So basically you can get 12 entries a month. I will pick the winner at the beginning of every month and they will be receiving a Visa gift card to use wherever they wish. So if you have PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo, whatever, or if you just want to get some Chick-fil-A, it doesn't matter. Okay, all you got to do is like the video, leave a comment down below, and every time you do that on every one of my videos, my live streams, that will count as one entry a piece. So you guys have at it. Have fun. I love you guys. Appreciate you. I'll see you in another video or actually I'll see you in a live stream Sunday, this Sunday at 730 PM. And then again on Wednesday. So come see me. Let's hang out. I'll try not to fart this time. I promise. Anyways, let me know your thoughts below on this whole deal with the Xbox Series S and what have you decided? And until next time, later dudes.